I have created a dense tropical rainforest hidden beneath an emerald canopy. Do you think you could host two different army ant species? Well, there is only really one way to find out. Don't worry, there will be other animals too. And watch until the end to learn by seeing yourself how animals can be kept together in this tank, as long as the conditions are right, of course. If I do something wrong, there could be ant wars and misery. I will also show how I made this vivarium, and then how four ant species, fish, amphibians, slugs and an unbearable amount of isopods claim their rightful place in the circle of life within this new large vivarium, next to our other vivariums of course. So just as some general background information, I have kept a tropical vivarium for a while, another one though, with hundreds of different species living inside, yes hundreds, but there is one species that I've always wanted which I've never really managed to keep inside the vivarium the marauder ants, which I sometimes call Asian army ants due to their absolute monstrous way of swarming food as you can see here. They have enormous queens that fly out, mate, shed their wings and start their colonies by pumping out thousands of eggs that in turn turn into everything from small minor workers to huge super mages. I mean look at the size difference between these two queens here. These colonies can reach up to hundreds of thousands of individuals and there is no queen in the video either. You can simply see the large super major ants here being ridden by other small minor ant workers, creating a living tank that no reasonable bug would ever challenge. Put simply, these ants are awesome. So when Aesthetic Ant offered me this colony here that I had my eyes on, I took my chances. They have an incredible shop and pretty sick social media actually, so if you get inspired by my videos and looking for ants, give these guys a look, please. Well, as you can see, we're in for a treat with these guys, look at that. <laughs> but let's get into the vivarium start now. They will be introduced later in this video with all the other animals, so make sure to watch until that happens. So, I started by dividing the tank into two areas with an impermeable separator straight in the middle. Then I added the grand structures, such as awesome pieces of wood that will tower over the aquatic part of the vivarium, where the pond was structured according to a few squared blocks I put in a U shape. I then created a protective filter around the pump, which would be used to create a small stream that eventually throws itself into the circular pond. It was then surrounded by a false bottom, which was separated from the earth I was going to put on top of it with a substrate divider. A white one, you can see there. Very important so that you don't create mud mixing with the water that accumulates at the bottom of the tank. Then I had some fun and glued some rocks onto a big flat rock to create a small aesthetic stream for the pumped water. I then filled up the pond with stones. Then finally it was all about filling it up with dirt and plants all around, including some decorative logs. And this is a process which is very personal and subjective as you decorate according to what you find aesthetic. I, for example, focus on diversity in order to allow as many animals inside to be able to flourish. But before I even could finish the build, I had to introduce our enormous marauder ant colony, which had been persistently living in a separate vivarium. I wanted to hurry the process of moving them in to our larger vivarium in order for them not to settle too much before the move. And also because I wanted to use some wood from their smaller vivarium, I was running out of stuff to fill it up with. And this was not going to be easy as I had to transport the two queens and the colony from their burrows underground in the dirt, carefully using a shovel. You can see one queen in the middle there and another super major next to her. I had to take multiple scoops to get most of the colony inside and since I sped it up it looks like I did it very roughly but believe me I was super careful not to hurt her highness. The two queens were both successfully delivered safely into their new kingdom or queendom. They will probably never be seen again but hey let's go we have got our army marauder ant colony inside the vivarium.
and finally I transported all the dirt and the rest of the workers from the other vivarium and voila, a nice little incline in the left side of the tank. But how were these guys going to do it in this vivarium, with multiple ant colonies and animals to come? Well, keep on watching to know. <laughs> the second bug to be introduced was of course the common house cricket. A very pleasant insect that will breed and provide all predators inside with a continuous diet. I hope these guys reproduce well, burrowing naturally and placing eggs in the dirt, just like they do in the wild. I could now also already see the marauder ants trailing around the vivarium and either exploring nest space or foraging for food. I also made sure to add an olive oil barrier now <laughs> around the tank to avoid any ants escaping into my room. Would be very unfortunate. Next I added some triops eggs in the pond, but nothing really came out of it. This is not my last try though, uh, more to come later. And at this point the vivarium was already gorgeous and wet and definitely tropical. The marauder ants were settling in well, awaiting for their new neighbours to arrive. The first aquatic neighbours were the fire salamander newts that were bred in my other vivarium. I put them inside here to protect them from their parents eating them, a temporary inhabitant trust me, since they're not native to Southeast Asia. But they were accompanied by Boraras fish shoal that was from Southeast Asia and I was hoping they would reproduce inside. Oh, and there was a red shrimp inside too. <laughs> I think you can see it there in the time lapse. Then I crucially added a bunch of prey, but most importantly decomposers in the form of isopods, springtails and earthworms that would consistently clean the vivarium becoming the initial backbone fauna, supporting the ecosystem. There were some overly courageous isopods wandering on the water where there were some predators <laughs> that snacked on them. Here you can see the newts absolutely going for one. The vivarium was now moving, not biodiverse, but you know, there was movement, which is a great start, but it's all about to change. First, more decomposer diversity. I added some orange springtails. I had a similar species in my tropical vivarium in Thailand, and I hoped that they would start their own colony here and that it would flourish. They will help decompose dead matter within the vivarium. They're also quite cute and aesthetic to look at. Look at them. Good luck, guys. Next was an epic species of isopods, which have a cool pattern of white going through the middle of their bodies, which thus gives them the name Panda King. My colony is young and small, but I hope these eight individuals somehow manages to reproduce and start a colony. If not, I have access to a spare colony in more favorable conditions, without predators on the side. Next were my beloved pancake slugs. <laughs> I love these guys. A very handsome pair, I hope would reproduce well inside as well. Only time will tell if we start seeing small cute pancake sluggies popping up in the feeding area of the vivarium. Can't wait for that to happen. I think they're going to be extremely cute looking. Next is a species of cockroach that, just like the panda king, I suppose, have a white band throughout the body, making me wanting to name these cockroaches the panda roaches. <laughs> As you can see, however, these guys are very young and do not even have the coloration yet. Also, they simply borrow for now, living underground. They have also very hairy bums, but I look forward to seeing them surface in their full adult form with wings and everything. I think they will add some beauty to the vivarium, as well as acting as prey. Next... Oh, sorry man. <laughs> Next, I added a fluorescent millipede species. Absolutely insane. We'll have to experiment with this later in the vivarium. They are also decomposers and will eat loads of dead matter in the vivarium. And apparently they also like the yellow stuff on lichen, I was told. Does anybody know why? They're also added with another unknown tropical millipede species. If anybody could identify it, that would be great. So I know if it's going to grow into a huge monster of 10 centimeters or something like that. I introduced them to the vivarium and they were so much longer than I expected, you know, just they they never ended. They just just like it was like a train. 
<laughs> watch the time lapse until the end and you will feel the same amount of surprise as I got, I'm sure. Or maybe not, I don't really know. They just felt so much longer than I expected. guys were now exploring their new home and I knew they would love it. Full of things for them to eat and crevices for them to explore. A true little piece of jungle or heaven just for them. <laughs> they also had new decomposer friends that were often out eating alongside them. Here you can see a cute little community of detrivores mostly surfacing at night. The new cockroaches though never surfaced. Maybe it was because they were scared of the dun 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 marauder ants. But other than that, it was a pleasure to see them forage around as if it really was their new home. At peace with their environment. They had now settled. I don't know what he's eating there, but it looks really nice and peaceful. This was, however, all going to change as a large set of new predators were going to enter the scene. Crucial to balance this ecosystem, whilst also providing us with an epic, you know, insight into predator and prey behavior. Make sure to watch until the end of the video to see what I chose as the apex predator of all predators inside. It is a big one. Starting now with the smallest but arguably most ferocious inhabitant was this mantis. It is from Southeast Asia and therefore fits into this vivarium, but I am unsure of the species, if anybody could help me. It is supposed to grow considerably larger than this though, which I'm looking forward to. I hope not too big, as certain giant mantises are known to be the only insects that actually feed on birds. Not only small hummingbirds, but also European robins, sunbirds, flycatchers, warblers, honey eaters and vireos. I don't think my vivarium can support such a beast and I would have to remove it. But for now it's doing a great job at least. Yummy yum. The next predator is an ant species which loves it very very wet. So I was planning to introduce them to the wetter part of the vivarium. Trap jaw ants. This small colony consisted of a queen with a few other workers and brood. The queen is harder to distinguish here, as she is similarly sized with a similar morphology. But as you can see, there is a difference between her and her workers as she has a slightly larger thorax, the middle segment of the ant, which had to support the wings she had during her nuptial flight. They were introduced to the wetter part of the vivarium as said, and they had a cute little flat nest and curiously peeked out of it, examining their surroundings. I also added some springtails for them to hunt, but also to populate the other side of the vivarium with them, as they might not have migrated there yet. These new ants took some time to move out, but my goodness, they proved to find an even wetter part of the vivarium to nest in. But for now, they simply moved in under pieces of wood below the ancient nest, being the second ant species to colonize these new ants. The cleanup crew of decomposers now had to be careful as these predators were now hunting alongside them. Even underwater battles were taking place. The fire salamander newts were just insane, taking on enormous prey that I would never dream of feeding them. Have a look at this worm that was snacking on what I initially meant as food for the newts and fish inside. Somehow the newts first bite in the middle of the worm and then they work themselves to the other end of the worm to later fully engulf the entire worm from end to end. An absolutely marvelous tactic and brilliantly executed, my friend. Not even turning into a fat newt as well in the process, still looks pretty thin, you will see soon. This newt is the most successful one so far um, that you see here. Probably conquering land as an adult the first because it just keeps eating these worms and they're all huge compared to the newt. I'm not sure if this is normal. If anybody keeping newts could comment down below or on the discord uh, about how 
if this is normal or not. I I'm not sure if I should stop it, if I should let it go. But yeah, just have a look at this. The entire worm is going to go down this little newt body. Well, instead of worms, I usually feed these guys with Daphnia, as you can see here, which gets devoured within a night. I love these time lapses, as they make life in the vivarium look so blissful and simply easy. Make sure to also observe the food disappear due to the greedy animals. There's a little ball of orange in the back there by the root. The next predatory element was an unknown species of ponerine ants. The reason for this colony addition was due to that I hoped these guys would keep a small colony size and mostly scavenge, not directly in competition with the other ant species. The absolute brilliance of this dynamic with other ant species was portrayed as well during their introduction, where I placed some dead crickets for their colony to eat during the night. What I did not expect was that the Marauder Ant Colony discovered the crickets first, from far away their own nest, and simply came and took them. But even though they basically dragged their precious crickets past the very large and vulnerable entrance of these ants nest, they easily could have overrun them, they just let them be. Pretty cool, right? You can see the newer small colony move about in their test tube. So they're still fine. <laughs> and these guys absolutely refuse to move out. And, however, I, 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 I patiently waited for them to do something else than just forage around. But after a while, I could just not wait for them anymore. And simply put the test tube further back in the vivarium. Because it was time for the Apex Predator introduction. All vivariums large like these needs a massive predator. A dinosaur that can take on the largest of herbivores, protecting the plants from annihilation. That makes them look like you know, the good guys, but, uh, and for this vivarium, I'd chosen a very scary apex predator, and it was, do you have any guesses? What do you think it would be? Well, a giant Vietnamese centipede. It can reach up to 20 centimeters and will prey on multiple crickets inside. These guys have an enormous pair of modified legs at the front of their face, let's call it, <laughs> that they use to inject venom into their prey, also known as toxicognaths. Apparently, they tend to try to eat almost every living animal they encounter that is not longer than themselves. Like for me, I'm six foot. Just kidding. They scared the bajemses out of me. <laughs> I know I won't see it much, but I hope to have a rare glimpse of it during night time lapses or during streams. It would be something that, really cool. Can't wait for that to happen actually. But I know what you're all thinking now. What about that other army ant species? You know, we're nearing the end of the video. When are they coming inside? Well, in the end, it was finally only these raider army ants left to put inside. They are extremely ferocious, taking down prey so quickly and swarming them. Have a look at this poor isopod here. I think this is a pretty good example of what they're capable of. They also expose incredibly interesting behavior by moving their entire colony to their latest catch, having a very mobile queen that quickly moves nests, which you can see here in a second. She's the larger one.
but most importantly, they can challenge the Marauder Ants inside. And oh my god, if you had seen what I had already seen, you would be jumping out of your seat of excitement right now. But their introduction and encounter will be for the next video. I'm so sorry. So make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification to see them. But if you really can't wait for the next video, stay along a little bit more in this, this one. And you might get a chance to see them a bit earlier. Alright, so if you really can't wait, make sure to jump onto the Nordic Ants Twitch and Discord. The Twitch will happen every Wednesday and Saturday, uh, where I stream the feeding of my tropical and European vivarium. If you're lucky, you might be able to spot either the centipede, the apex predator, but most certainly you will spot these two army ant species because they eat all the time and they challenge each other at the meals. The times may vary, so make sure to jump onto the Discord to get some sort of understanding of the schedule. The link for both is above and in the description. Have a fantastic day and see you for the next Vivarium update. It's been a pleasure.